Hi, welcome to our Bible study, Bible study number 12. Okay, we are back in the book of John, and let's go to the 6th chapter and the 26th verse. I'm going to get right into it. <laughs> okay, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Okay, we've talked about the water and how what it represented in another Bible study. Now let's look at the meat, almost the same thing. Um, they were following him because they'd get something out of it. Basically, they were looking for the, the bread, the meat, the, the something to eat. Okay, and he's saying, don't work for the meat that's going to perish. I mean, yeah, in other places they say we need to work with our hands. That's not what he's talking, you know, that's not what he's talking about. Um, he's saying that's not the important thing. Let's focus on, not on working on what's going to just pass away. If you put your all into that, you're missing something. There's something else besides the food that nourishes this body that's going to perish, okay? Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. There's something else you can get. The meat, you ever heard somebody say, get down to the meat of the word or what the, the real stuff is, you know? Okay, we always think physical because that's all we know. Basically, we we're born into this physical life. Um, and that's what we understand. But there's something else. There's a spiritual side, and that's where real life is at. This is fleeting. This life is very fleeting. We really need to think about eternal life and what's going to last eternally, not just in this physical life that we have here. That It's a blessing. This life is a blessing, and it's something we get to share, and we get to experience, and we can share with others and tell them, and tell them about Jesus in the eternal. But anyway, then um, he says in verse 28, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Okay, so he's saying that's the kind of labor that you need to be thinking about. So they say, okay, so what can we do to do the works of God? Have you ever asked that in your life? What can I do for the Lord? What kind of works can I do? Do I need to get out and and pass out all these tracts, or do I need to do this, or do I need to do that? And those things are fine in their place. But listen to what Jesus' answer is in verse 29. So the question, what is the question? How do I do the works of God? Now, look at verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Huh? Boy, that'll throw a lot of people for a loop. What's the work of God? What is it that you believe on Jesus Christ that God sent? That's that's where it all begins. Until you do that, nothing else that you do is going to even matter. The work of God, really, it's all what God has done. It's believing in the one that God sent. That's the only, that's it. That's what we do. Now, once you really do that and believe on the one that God sent, Jesus Christ, then your life begins for the Lord and you can do things for him and it's great. But you know, we want to, to, to do things for him, but all of our works, they can be a witness to others. Um, they can help your family to be blessed. If you follow and do the ways and live life, according to the way the Bible says, life will be a lot easier. It's never going to be a total bed of roses because even Jesus said in this life, ye shall have tribulation. But things go much better if you live according to what the scriptures lay out the best you can. Um, but the most important thing is believing on Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing. That is the work of God. We can't work our way to heaven. No, we believe and Jesus did the works to make the way to heaven. 
But while we're down here on earth, works are important. But that's not the spiritual side. We can't work our way to heaven. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. So that's really something that um, I think that we need to think about because a lot of people in this world are teaching just the opposite. It's, it's good outweighing bad. And if you have enough good, maybe you'll make it to heaven. That's not true. No, 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 no. One sin and you're not good enough to go to heaven and we're born into sin. That's the way it is because it was passed on to us from Adam. So we <laughs> were already lost. There's no way we can work our way to heaven without Jesus Christ. Okay, it's not works. It's his, it's not our works. It's his works. And um, I think the scripture is very clear on that. Now, I'm not saying works are not important. They're not important for salvation, but they are important for your life and to being a light to others. They're important so that your life goes smoother. I mean, all of those kind of things are important. And we like to share about the word so other people come to know the Lord and, and other people can grow in the Lord. The most important thing is putting your faith and your trust, believing that one that God sent. And that, and who was it that God sent? Jesus Christ. So that is what we need to, to concentrate on. This is a really good, this, this whole section here is really good. Let's go on with what we're talking about. Let's go to verse 30. They said, therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. Oh, yeah? But my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. There's another verse, in the, I can't think where it's at right now, but it says all those things in the Old Testament, they were all done as an example, as an example or as a picture of things to come. That manna that the children of Israel ate in the wilderness was a picture of Jesus Christ. He's our manna. He's our bread. Okay, so all that stuff is, is allegories or pictures. Okay, verse 33, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am, I am, I am, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me. And believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to live the way I want to live. And when I'm ready, I'll just come to the Lord then so I can have all my fun first. It doesn't work that way. You only come when the Holy Spirit is drawing you. And you may not even realize that. Um, I didn't. But... I saw it later because there's other times like I had gave in my testimony how my grandma had talked to me and we prayed, but I wasn't saved then. Um, it wasn't until the Holy Spirit drew me later that I got saved. I didn't know all that at the time. All I knew was I wanted to be saved. But if the Father gives them to him, however that happens, maybe it already happened, I don't know, but he's not going to turn them away. You come to the Lord and sincerely really want the Lord. Jesus is not going to turn you away. I will in no wise cast out. Verse 38, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Sorry, all that noise is my dog over there scratching, trying to get down underneath the blankets. 
verse 39 and this is my the father's will which hath sent me that of all which he hath given me i should lose nothing okay so if the father that's interesting somebody was just talking to me this morning i think they were trying to show me that you could lose your salvation but if the father gives you i need to mark this so i can show this to her later the verse i just didn't have any verses coming to me at the time i was talking to her and that was just a few minutes ago here the lord's just popped it right out okay all that the father giveth jesus isn't going to lose they're going to be raised at the last day so if you are one of those that the father gave to jesus and you get saved you're saved he's not going to lose you and you're not going to get lost along the way um verse 39 this is the father's will which has sent me that of all which he hath given me i should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day and this is the will of him that sent me that every one which seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and i will raise him up at the last day i will raise him up at the last day isn't that a wonderful promise that is something to hold on to you know a lot of us fear because we don't know what's on the other side. We fear death, but we don't have to. We'll be raised again that last day if we believe in Jesus Christ, if he is our Lord and our Savior. We have that promise. What a beautiful, beautiful promise. And we're going to stop there for now in the Bible study part. And then I'm going to bring you our encouragement part. Sometimes... Doing something, I'm, I'm bringing you the encouragement part. Sometimes doing a little something besides just sitting and reading helps to reinforce what you've been reading or what you find or the blessings that you have. It would be kind of neat. Now, this is something you might want to try doing. It's up to you, but I'm presenting it to you as an encouragement. You might want to get a little notebook and then... What you can do is say, when you're studying or reading, like this, like what we found today about the resurrection. And then start writing down the promises of God as you run into them. And then sometimes when you're kind of down and out, open that up and start reading through all the promises of God. And it will help to bring you out of that kind of slump that you get in or a little bit of a depression or something like that. Maybe just sit down with a good cup of um, herbal tea that something like some ashwagandha or something like that. And I mix something with my ashwagandha because just straight ashwagandha um, is a little bit bitter. So I mix it in with my other roots and herbs. I make a big batch of it. But anyway, it something that's uplifting or maybe it's just uplifting you to have just a cup of hot tea, whatever kind it may be, that's... That's always just calming. I just love having my cups of tea. But with that, sit down and read through your little notebook of God's promises to you. So sometimes, you know, just a little, just a little notebook. Um, let me grab one of my little notebooks and show you what I'm talking about. Now this one's handy. It's nothing big. They don't cost much. Maybe 50 cents or something at the Dollar Tree. Um... But this one just happens to be Gail's tea recipes. I just, different recipes that I create that I like, I write down in here. But you can, I have lots of little notebooks like this. I bought several of them. And um, you can take one, just a little one like this. And on the front of it, just write God's promises. And each time you run across it, write it down. And then maybe on one page you write, at the top, write with the promises that you found. And then if you have any thoughts on it below, put my thoughts. And put something on, maybe something special the Lord gave you with that promise, of some ideas or thoughts, or just something that comes to your mind that day about it. Uh, sometimes it's good to write it down because you can often forget, and then you go back and you read, oh, I forgot all about that. How neat. And you're blessed again. I've done that. Um, but, yeah, just a little word of encouragement, something you might do to help encourage yourself because it's a blessing to find God's promises and sometimes in life we deal with so much sometimes the other day I just woke up feeling the moment I opened my eyes I just felt this heavy oppression almost just down the whole day I was 
I really had to concentrate on, you know, usually I can just get out and go to work in my garden or this and that. I had to make myself do things I needed to do. I just wanted to lay down and block out the whole world and didn't want to look at anything. I'm not usually like that. It was, you know, but something like this kind of helps those type of days, uh, not my tea recipes, but you know what I mean? A little notebook with, um, God's blessings, God's, that's another one you can do is something you've been blessed with, but God's promises was what I meant to say. And uh, it, it's very uplifting, and the, just reading the Word of God is uplifting. But I'm going to close off and leave this with you now, and hope you all have a blessed day, and we will catch you next time. Bye now.